our high school or the three point line, and the coaches didn't like you shooting out there. So I want to welcome everyone. We appreciate it. It seems like we uh, pick a few people up every night. We've got uh, several people here, uh, guests. We've got some regular guests that we have at different times. We always appreciate it. And we do appreciate our ministers. They rotate for us and voice our prayer as we open. That's one thing we do wish. We wish to have the Lord's leader, leadership and guidance in what we do, if, if nothing else. But we need that leadership and guidance. Afterwards, we'll ask uh, Phyllis if she will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Doyle Kinney, a uh, minister from First Christian Church, will uh, lead us in our prayer tonight. Did I get that right or did I just? Okay. Sure. Sometimes I'm talking and not listening. Doyle, well, I appreciate it, and thank you for being here. And if you'll lead us in our prayer, we'll, we'll get started tonight. Eternal Father, we are so thankful for the rain that has fallen. And now, Father, I ask that uh, you be with the meeting tonight, that things that are discussed and decisions that are made, Father, may they bring honor and glory to your name. And Father, we thank you for these men and women who give of their time to betterment of our community and our city. And so, Father, we just thank you for the privilege that we have of living in a country of freedom, a country in which we can express ourselves, and a country in which we can benefit not only ourselves, but our community. For this I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, This is a, a grant application, 9% to rehab the tarmac and, and uh, side runway, uh, taxiway. And simply we'll be putting this in the next budget, but that does require an approval of the council. So we can get this in the budget and let the state know we're willing to take a 9% grant to uh, continue rehabbing our uh, um, airport uh, annually. Now we've had several different projects and we have money available and as the money becomes available from the FAA we continue to upgrade and improve our airport. Any questions or comments related to this particular uh, action item from the council? Good project. Very good project. It's exciting. I want to buy a plane one of these days. So I'll be more excited. Any questions or comments on this particular item from anyone in the audience? I have a plane for sale. <laughs> I want to talk to you after the meeting's over. It's, I think I've got a hundred and some dollars in my back pocket. We might be able to arrange a deal. Uh, any other questions or comments from the audience? Not seeing any, we'll entertain a motion to approve uh, this agenda item. So moved. Second. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Hoover? Yes. Trustee Rudolph? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. City Manager's report for the uh, airport agenda. Uh, just, just to say that this is a very good project along with this, is, again, this is the aeronautics project, our FAA project, uh, we continue on that, on that particular path again in the next budget of the year as well, which you are aware of that, and, and we continue. And, th and their funding used to be 95-5, but the FAA did get approved in their long-term five-year plan through the federal government, and that is now 90-10, but that's still a very, very good program, we'll continue. So, uh, airport's very vital economic development, and we'll continue to support that and, and move forward. So just a quick update on that. I hope the federal government continues to support the local airports, so we shall see. Um, any audience participation under this particular uh, agenda? The Clinton Airport Authority, if you have a question or comment relating to this authority, this would be the time to bring it up. Uh, you will have a general opportunity later, as well as specific opportunities on different action items. Not seeing any, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the airport authority. Second. Second. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Hoover? 
Yes. Trustee Burgo? Yes. And Chair. Yes. Moving on to the industrial regular meeting of the Clinton Industrial Authority. We'll open it up and entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Burgo? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. First action item. So remember, you read these things as you go through. Long week already. First action item is consider resolution IA 12 1 regarding the issuance of Clinton Industrial Authority revenue note. And uh, Steve, I'm going to walk us through an overview of this for everyone. Council, the next four items are regarding the funding for the uh, fire station, as you know, um, asked by the um, good people of Clinton to help uh, build a new fire station. This would be the funding allow this to happen now rather than wait a year to happen. And so, as you know, you also approved a financing through OBNT, um, and Wheeler Lowry, uh, Deborah, and um, Ryan here have been working on the finance agreements to finalize the next four items are regarding that finance agreement, the terms and, and legalities, I guess you could say, for, for Oklahoma statute. Uh, Ryan can talk more about these in detail. Um, as he's been putting them together. You'll also see these blanketed in the city council as well as the authority. Um, Brian, you want to? I think it's <coughs> question, I know there's any specific questions about, about the resolution itself authorizes the, this resolution authorizes the, uh, the authority to, uh, to borrow the money. Um, there's a resolution that bears it at, uh, in, the, uh, in the, the council uh, agenda. Um, there are a couple of other ancillary things that we're just required to pass uh, so that the state can look over our shoulder and make sure that we're dot and I's across the feet. $4 million construction project financing. Any questions or comments about this from anyone on the council? I think it's good to see <clears throat> local. Questions or comments from anyone in the audience relating to this particular uh, action item? We heard that you can give you the option if you'd like to. You're welcome to. I don't want to shut you up. No, sir. No comment. Any other questions or comments from anyone in the audience related to this particular uh, financing? Not seeing any, I'll entertain a motion. And if you would make it uh, affirmative or negative based on what you're making, so that uh, for, for the action item consider certificate of incumbency for the Clinton Industrial Authority and once again Steve give us an overview for everybody. Again this is just continued uh, state required uh, legalities regarding the, uh, the note itself. Questions or comments from council related to this? We have to hold out to them who is who. There's a, there's a typo there on paragraph two. Paragraph two. Yeah that's not taxable so tell me to take that out. Okay, so we're going to amend this particular item to remove after series 2012 taxable. from anyone in the audience. <laughs> Not seeing any, I'll entertain a motion to approve this with the change to take the taxable in parentheses and parentheses out behind series 2012 in the second paragraph. Or is the second paragraph there? So moved. Second. Trustee Huber? Yes. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. Moving along, consider promissory note between the Clinton Industrial Authority and the Oklahoma Bank and, and Oklahoma Bank and Trust. And 
with several items here. Steve, any comments on this? Or is it Council, this is the note itself in the terms of as you can read for it. Standard agreement. Any questions or comments on this? I know it's fairly chewy. It's the last letter. It's Saturday. It's like a Saturday. Looks like it. Let me Questions or comments from Council? Not seeing any questions or comments from anyone in the audience. <coughs> Not seeing any. I'll entertain a motion. Since this is a follow along, entertain a motion to approve this promissory note between the Clinton Industrial Authority and Oklahoma Bank and Trust. So moved. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Rudolph? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. Another action item considers security agreement. And it is Steve and Common. There's another follow along. Another security agreement between For the loan itself. Flip side of everything we're doing. And uh, security interest information. Any questions or comments, Council? Questions or comments from anyone in the audience? Seeing any, I'll entertain a motion since it is a follow along. Entertain a motion to approve the security agreement between the city of Clinton and the Clinton Industrial Authority. This would be the Industrial Authority side of things. Second. Second. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Gregor? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. Moving on to uh, fifth action item. I don't know whether we've had that many action items under the Industrial Authority. We're going up the numbers. Up. Consider sale of approximately nine acres of land on Red Wheat Chapman Road for a, a new hotel to uh, Keaton Modi. Did I say that right, Keaton <coughs> Modi? Modi. Modi. Get that right. That's uh, Keaton is here with his wife and his uh, with your mother and his father. So, um, Steve, I'll turn it over to you. Well, Council uh, Keaton approached me on some property we own, uh, Red Wheat Drive, at Chapman Road. Nine, nine acres approximately, um, interested in purchasing that for a new Queen's Inn, and you can read the commentary. Um, Keaton's here to, tonight to make an offer on that property for a hotel in development, and I'm gonna actually just introduce Keaton to, uh, he has a few things to say to the council. <coughs> Go from there. <coughs> I would tell you, I'm, I'm excited. I think when we originally, you know, thought about developing south and the commitment from the city and we went through the TIF district, I know I mentioned to Lisa, Lisa sat in all those TIF meetings and that's, you, you grind that out and you hope that other people will see the opportunity in Clinton. So we're excited. Steve, comments from you? Well, Council, Keaton made an offer on the property, um, the city person the property uh, a few years back for 71000 he made an offer. We, we talked uh, uh, last week regarding that offer, and he's willing to pay the seventy-one thousand. He he also understands that any kind of a development agreement that there's stipulations to construction timing, and I think um, and, and reverting back to the city with the reversion clause of some type that we need to discuss. And, but I think first the council needs to I guess uh, agree or disagree to to possibly sell the property and work on a uh, development agreement with uh, Mr. Modi. Feedback, but we'd like to. Uh, staff would definitely see this as a plus for more development in the area. So we're just uh, we'd like to go back and you know negotiate this, uh, this development. Well, Steve, don't you have some, some thoughts on getting an increased price above the seventy-one thousand uh, predicated on cap income? 
Yes, the property obviously has increased in value. And I, if, if, if the concern of the council is, is um, the price of the property due to the development that's recently happened by Mr. Schumacher, um, it, it is definitely evident that, that the property is worth more than $71,000 that was purchased number years ago. The, the city can retain that through, and, and, and Ryan can talk a little bit more about this than I can, obviously, from a legal standpoint. But a second mortgage in the TIF, that basically once the TIF is paid off, the Schumacher improvements, that the TIF then will begin to pay off a price that we determine is needed um, for the property value. Um, and that then would, from Mr. Modi's property, would begin to pay that off um, through his uh, tax revenues. That would allow us to, him to pay, him to have a development agreement to be pro-business and he could pay $71,000 up front. The city then would get back the back end value through the TIF after the uh, Schumacher property has uh, been um, been paid off the improvements. And that would be a win-win, I think, both for Mr. Modi as well as the city getting back what the property is uh, valued at. Well, then also, wouldn't you? Uh, so what you're wanting to do is between now and, now and the next meeting, negotiate with Mr. Modi and put provisions in there on time constraints Yeah, I think we need to discuss, obviously, the city needs to see, we should see development happen quickly. I think Mr. Modi has talked about that. We want to see development happen quickly, breaking ground, uh, moving forward, determining what exactly on-site needs and in, in development future beyond, you know, the, the hotel um, and the area and the development. Those, those items have to be in a development agreement. We need to put stipulations that if he doesn't do anything, we're not able to create, get financing, not able to do the project, reverse back to the city. So yeah, there's a lot of details and any kind of, um, but I think that the, the important thing tonight is that if the council sees this as a, as a good project that we move forward on the negotiation with Mr. Modi, and I think we can obviously cover some of the costs, we can cover the timing, we can cover the, um, the acreage and some of the things that are needed, that he needs and, and, and negotiate that so that the council they can decide if it's good for both Mr. Modi and, and, and the city. So tonight we're basically gonna we're going to give you the authority to enter into a negotiation or an agreement to, to, for Mr. Modi to purchase the land and, and you guys will come up with some type of a, an agreement with terms and bring it back to the council for final approval. If you'd approve that, yes, we'd like to do that. Keaton, you're welcome to sit down. Uh, you know what, I think questions for Mr. Keaton from the council. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Look forward Thank to working you. with you. Thank you. And, uh, I, I was young once, and it's exciting when young people are <coughs> stepping out. And I think people realize it's, it's a risk. There's no guarantee in the business, and it doesn't matter whether you're uh, in the re a restaurant, hotel, it doesn't matter, there's risk. So it's nice to see a young couple who wants to take risk, and I'm excited. Uh, we appreciate you being here tonight. Um, any questions for, for uh, Keaton? Finish that up. And, um, as a rule, um, any comments? by council at this point. I think we've made clear we're just going to move forward with uh, negotiating. Negotiations, we have several different avenues and things that we need to take uh, take spiff of. I think the overall concept is that we are predisposed to development. That's what we want to make sure we're clear with. And opening it up to the uh, audience, any questions or comments from the audience related to this particular project? Yes, Walt. Okay. Yes, if you would, it's a favor to come up here. Kind of, it sounds better, and we're trying to get it all on camera so people can pull it up if they want. Let me uh, switch over there while there's the mic. I would say, that one. Yeah, that one works. So, all right. Well, you know, I tainted anything I say about his project. I tainted on. I understand that. <clears throat> uh, and I can remember about uh, 43 years ago going to my first council meeting on my first project and I, I looked when he was sitting there and I thought I remember that I remember how I felt yeah a uh, couple of just a couple of things I'd ask you to look at uh, do anybody does anybody in the council know what the occupancy rate of hotels in Clinton is I believe you ever has a good idea but I do, I do not know I will tell you that last week it was I might make a comment on that Deborah would probably know that why well, don't you do last week's October the council is not privy to the information that we get from the hotel motel tax, so really, no, we're oh, well. There are uh, there are reports that are public reports, and it was 74 percent in Clinton last uh, last month. 
the last 30 days, it's around a total and about $72 a room. Uh, you know, the, the TIF district is a good project, and, and I know that it will up somebody perhaps when you're sitting there saying, yeah, but look at all the money he got. Well, all the money we got for that road has to be paid back, and, and we're on the hook personally. If it isn't paid back in 15 years, we have to pay. So I just want to make that clear. Now, typically a motel or a hotel needs about three acres. And so I'm having a tough time understanding why we need to sell nine acres. And, and the first proposal, which was the one that was in the paper, was at about nine cents on the dollar. I uh, would remind you that the city has brought water through the tip district to that site. And sewer is now very close. So that has driven the price of that thing up. I think that piece of land is worth 500000 I have had people disagree with me and tell me it's worth four fifty. If we use four fifty or we use something smaller, you've been talking about selling it at nine cents on the dollar. Nine cents on the dollar. Uh, I don't know which constituents will, will be tolerate that. I think, I think what you need to do tonight is, is like you're talking about, agree to uh, review it and, and table it. I would suggest you need to get an appraisal as to what your land is worth. Because the taxpayers of this city, and I'm not, uh, the citizens of this city own that land, I think, not me. I'm not, I don't live in the city limits. I think you need to investigate who's involved and, and get full disclosure. Uh, I think you need to investigate the market. Uh, you would do that for any project. Uh, I think you need to ask your uh, citizens if they're if they're okay selling the land for nine cents on a dollar or eleven cents on a dollar or whatever. And I have a question: Why would you sell nine acres to someone at a discount, at a severe discount, uh, when they need three? What are we going to do with the other six? It's and my understanding that that's why we're talking about it. Understand, but from the way it came out of the paper on the. Uh, and the agenda was nine acres, uh, forty thousand dollars. Well, it was only when I got here tonight that I heard anything different. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Walt. We appreciate what Walt's done. I think it's uh, part of the moving factor here is uh, Walt's project. But I also, uh, I know I, I sit and I listen. And <laughs> when we bought that property, we thought we knew what we were going to do with it. I, I had several people tell me we were crazy to buy it. Um, and I know Walt sat through the TIF district, and he probably realized there was a reason why that, that land, that nine acres, wasn't originally in the TIF district. We needed it in the TIF district for development. Um, and I, I think that's where we are now. We're going to allow Steve to sit down with uh, a person who has demonstrated the ability to operate a hotel for a long period of time in Clinton, Oklahoma, one of our people. And uh, we're going to sit down and negotiate the ability of how much property does does the group need? Uh, what price would be a fair price and how we get to that? Uh, you know, I, I remember Walt's project, I, I think it was higher than 15 million, but if you use the 15 million, you know, that 1.5 million dollars that was put into that project was uh, the citizens' money. And the citizens are taking their sales tax and their tax that comes off that project to repay that 1.5 million dollars. So uh, when, when you look at the overall scheme of development, when you look at the idea, uh, this, this doesn't have that much different flavor from what we did with the, the TIF district. Um, and I think I have excellent faith in uh, Steve. Steve's very uh, good at negotiation. I know we'll take Ryan into account, and I look forward to working uh, <coughs> with Steve and staff working with uh, uh, Keaton and, and the Modi family. And uh, hopefully we get to a point where we all feel comfortable with it. It's a good thing for the city of Clinton, the citizens, and importantly, a good deal for the business people that will operate in La Quinta and have to do so for the future and pay their bills and, and pay back the investors <coughs> and the people who loan money for that thing. So any questions or comments related to uh, Walt's comments? I, I, I would just like to say that I, I have visited with several of my constituents in my ward. And I will tell you that based on the, the talks that I've had, I don't see that the price of the property being a big issue. I think the citizens 
in this community and want to see some growth, they want to see development, and I believe that they are satisfied with the fact that the city is going to sell the property for the amount that they paid for it. I, I, I'm pro-business, I think it's a great, great idea, great job. Um, I just take that into consideration, Steve, upon your negotiations. <coughs> What I, what I would like to see you do, you know, take us, us all into account, you know, there are nine acres, one of the questions I have, we need to, I think we need to put a time frame in there on utilization of the property, of the hotel, or other things that might uh, be going into effect. And <clears throat> since it is in the TIF district, I, I feel like that we need to get the property up close to market value and tie it. You know, utilize a seventy one thousand dollar initial purchase price, but don't have a reversionary clause in there if all the property is not used and then by the tip, the tail end of the tip, uh, payment of the additional market price of what's the those any comments or questions? I'm really excited for the opportunity for Clinton. And it is just exciting seeing positive things happening and continued growth. And I, I really feel like we need to let Steve do some negotiating with this. There's a lot of unanswered questions for us right now. I don't think we can get an answer tonight. So. Steve's an excellent man. I think we have to forward that. Here, I'm more than I'll make the motion to uh, authorize Steve to negotiate. Trustee Rodolph? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Hewlin? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. Um, I'm very excited. The, the thing that I would say in our conversations that I've had with Steve is um, I, I think, Keaton, you, you've got a great attitude. You said whatever we need to do to make it happen, you know, within reason. And I understand that I'm a businessman too. There is a point you come to. But, but I think that attitude, I, I love your attitude. I think you've been very, very friendly, very good to work with, and that, that says a lot. So. And I, I never forget the fact you live in Clinton, Oklahoma. That buys a lot of mileage with this guy because um, you want to see Clinton people be successful yeah, in no matter who they are. So look forward to that. And uh, Steve, we'll push that over to you. We'll let you work with uh, the Moda family and see if we come up to a point where we kind of cover all our bases. Appreciate the uh, work that you and Ryan have done discussing what the options are and kind of thinking outside the box. Any final questions or comments? No. Okay. We will uh, move on. Bounce this over to the city manager's report for the Clinton Industrial Authority. Nothing extra. Uh, audience participation for the Industrial Authority. This is your opportunity. If you have an item that you'd like to discuss or bring up with Clinton Industrial Authority, your opportunity as a public to be able to do so. Not seeing any, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the regular meeting on the Clinton Industrial Authority. Some of you. Trustee Yes. Trustee Smith. Yes. Trustee Rodolph. Yes. And Chairman. Yes. I'm sitting here reading that. Thank you. Tax season will be over in 27 days. <laughs> We're going to go to the regular meeting of the Clinton City Council and open it up and entertain a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Councilwoman Smith? Yes. Councilman Hewlett? Yes. Councilman Rodolph? Yes. And Mayor? Yes. First action item discuss and consider possible city charter change. Steve. Council, basically tonight regarding this um, discussion item is a, a little direction from the council. We've, we've heard some, um, some comments regarding the election and the dates. And for us to put this together, we need some direction. And if you want us to move quickly, because of the time constraints, I wanted want to get on the agenda as quickly as possible. So tonight, uh, there may be some other things in the charter that, 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 are, that are outdated that we may need to look at as well. But before we get into that, the elections seem to be the top priority on the, on the dates. I need, some, I need some feedback and direction on how you want to put that together. So I'm basically <coughs> turning it over to you to help me. Let, me. let me start and you guys can carve and chop because I'm sure there will be differences of opinion. Um, what I would like to see done, I like the November election from the standpoint of you get a lot of people out 
and I, I think it's a, it's a good time. A lot of different things are going on in that in November election. However, when we got locked into the state's dates, I think is where the problem comes in. So I personally, I would like to keep it November because I think a lot of people go vote, and it's, it's a good time. You can have good turnout, you can have good numbers, but I would like to see us as a city carve off our dates to where there is, are the necessary dates in advance of that November, whatever the timing needs to be, to where perhaps you sign up in July, August, whatever you need to do, have your preliminary, if there's a runoff, and then do your general election in November. Uh, that, that's my opinion. Don, you're welcome. If, um, you know, if you have another idea, or you had something to say. So. Well, I personally think it needs to be changed. I really really good material to me. But I think it's unfair to run for a non-paid position and file in April and not have the election in November and have the campaign six months. And, you know, I think we need to be kind of, if, if it's the opinion of the council to leave the election in November, work backward and see how much time Really and pretty six, eight weeks is all you need. Yeah. And go backward from that and see what the state law is. One of the one of the main reasons I think we had to change, make some changes on that, is our former code did not allow enough time for absentee ballots to be mailed out. So I think we need to work with the election board and determine how much time need to have from filing to a primary to the general election. Because if you have more than two people filed, you have a primary, then you take your general election. I've seen no reason to do it for more than two months. That's I have a problem with the timing. I think the quicker you get it done, you know, it, it is a city office and you, you two months the mayor's gonna hoof it, but a uh, council award person, they're gonna be hoofing it too. I and mean, that's good you can get around the award. Door to door and do your thing if you need to. That's just my thought. Yeah, I like that. Um, case well, I, I think the November, working back from the November election is probably a good idea. Yeah, we're unanimous on that. We talked about the November and what we want is just the timing in between there. But like I said, the April is kind of just too bad. No, it's, it's, you know, originally we thought we were going to save some money, and, and at the time, money was important. Um, I think there's a balance, though, between just insanity and saving a buck or two. I mean, it's in, um, so. Well, actually, it's not going to cost anything because you're going to have an election every November. Yeah, and, and if it's, there's two people running, you'll be on that. But if you have to put your special dates out there, you'll be well, Yeah, you might make it lucky. You may have something in there, depending on what the timing is. Does that kind of give you the direction? Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, Lisa has made contact, tried to make contact with the state. We haven't done anything back yet. The state election board will be back with her and we're finding out the state law on some of those things. So we will start working backwards and we'll bring some a draft um, back to you. Well, she's, yeah, we're, we're contacting her. They're getting two research boards right now. So we'll get back with you on that and we'll start doing that, maybe shorten that time. I keep it November, bring something back for you to look at and get some more feedback. But I just, nothing major tonight. I just wanted to get just that little feedback from you so that we kind of have an idea on a direction to go. And so I, I do appreciate that. So I'll to put that together. Would that affect this year's final? Yeah. No, what this year's final? Kind of lock in. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we get it and fix it before next year. Reds <coughs> or whoever. I guess that would be actually Mr. Mark's season. Uh, you, Mr. Jenkins. Yeah. Any other questions or comments related to this from the council? Uh, it's unusual, but any questions or comments from the audience related to this particular item? If you have a feeling on it, you're welcome to voice that. Not seeing any, we'll move on to consider contract with Colony Construction for remodel of the police no. department. Uh, police uh, station. No. Did I just blow past something? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get out early. Consider ordinance number 930B regarding flood damage prevention. Steve, I'll let you give us an overview. Federal government requires this as a as a, to review our flood plane. Um, so this uh, ordinance is required by, and so basically you can read the commentary, but that is um, something that uh, MI has reviewed it, and I think it's, it's ready for your approval. Uh, 
Questions or comments, Council? Questions or comments from the audience? I Second. Yeah. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. Councilman Schumann? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. And Mike? Yes. Uh, next action item. Does that need to be? Should I need to say the emergency? Is that emergency clause? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 agreement with Oklahoma Bank and Trust. Same thing we did on the flip side, some of the city, any credit and comments here? Nope, it's a blanket. The next two items are blankets from the uh, industrial authority. And uh, if there are no questions or comments from council, I'll run into the motion to approve resolution 802 under the city of Clinton with authorizing the Clinton Industrial Authority to enter into finance agreement with Oklahoma Bank and Trust. So Does it need an emergency? No. 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 Okay. Councilman Hewlett? Yes. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. And Mike? Yes. Next action item, follow along, consider security agreement between the City of Clinton and the Clinton Industrial Authority. This is related back to the ones we've been uh, running through on the series 2012 revenue note. And if there are not any questions or comments from the council, questions or comments from the audience, then I will go ahead and entertain a motion to approve the security agreement between the City of Clinton and the Clinton Industrial Authority and under the City of Clinton. <coughs> Second. Councilwoman Smith? Yes. Councilman Hewlin? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. And Mayor? Yes. And Mayor. <coughs> Next action item. I'm trying to run too fast. Consider contract with Colony Construction for the remodel of the police station. Now we're here, Steve. Uh, Council, you uh, approved the low bid with Colony Construction. Uh, last meeting, we have been working on the contract with them. We have already value engineered some items with a savings of over $34,000, nearly, nearly $35,000. This is a standard AIA document. Had them reviewed by the city attorney at a contract price of $548,904. Um, once approved, we'll begin a um, notice to proceed and begin the project, which will take 200 days. Questions or comments from council related to this? Um, I know the chief's back there excited. And any questions or comments from council? Questions? We'll notice proceed. Um, we'll have a pre construction meeting. We're hoping that'll be next week or in two weeks. And then at that point, 200 days from that point, they'll be on site for to be done. Questions or comments from anyone in the audience related to this? I'll give you all the opportunity to get a question or comment. Not seeing any, entertain a motion. A motion, I believe, from Councilwoman Smith. I second. Councilwoman Smith? Yes. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. Councilman Hewlett? Yes. And Mayor? Yes, I'd love that before we even authorize it, we value engineer $35,000. That's, that's exciting. I appreciate it. That's the, that's the way it's ground running. City Manager's report for the City of Clinton. Uh, first, I'd like to have Arnold Adams. He's going to give you a, a, a rain lake update. I know that's probably on everybody's mind. Huh? Recent rains. Arnold. South Pond is full and running over. All right. uh, Big Lake is up. Jeremy was up this morning, maybe four to six inches. And uh, West Lake has come up about a foot. It's two foot from running over. Uh, it still lacks closer to four foot from running over. But South Pond is running over. That's the Good point. The lake has come up some. Well, we got lucky. There was a big storm that came right through that area that probably got an inch of rain. And uh, it was what, what we got after that. That's probably the first big storm that's come right through that area. And it, some of them have hooked around it. Some of them have hooked. I mean, it's just been almost ridiculous how it's managed to miss, miss our lake. So uh, Don called it right again. He said it was going to rain. So we'll, we'll count on him to call it again. I didn't say how much. I didn't say how much. <laughs> it's not your first rodeo. Well, Council, also, uh, we're working with FOSS, uh, the Conservancy District, and, and on options, planning, long term planning with them. Um, obviously, <coughs> planning is something we need, we need but um, um, a long term plan with FOSS is something we continue to work with them. We'll 
and as they as they move forward on a long term plan, they're going to be looking for an engineer. Um, we're going to work with them very closely on that. And and last item uh, received from uh, Joe Ridley a, a preliminary plan of our housing, about 37 lots at this point on site. We're trying to finish the topo survey right now. Um, we should have that done within a couple of weeks. At that point, then um, he'll go to CAD, have something a little bit more formal to bring to you. So hopefully within uh, the next month, I'll have a, a two, next, not the next council meeting, but the second one in April, I can show you a, hopefully a, a, a CAD <coughs> what we're thinking that housing addition will look like. So, and that's all I have tonight. Uh, Tuesday night, Steve and I met with uh, some of with the physicians, the doctors, uh, integrous doctors. Uh, they're very kind. I would tell you we have all outstanding doctors that care about the city of Clinton, and I was thoroughly impressed. Um, they had some concerns. Uh, we, we just talked to them in a very general nature, but uh, uh, I feel like uh, you know, those, those concerns, once we started through the contract, uh, Ryan is to be commended. I think he did an outstanding job, and I've heard that from other people who are outside the system. They can't believe the contract we got, but I, I was very... Uh, excited about being with the doctors. Um, they did have some concerns. We took note of those that we, we believe were in good shape. We'll continue to meet with the doctors and answer questions and, and take their concerns in, into into account. Are we still on for April 1 with that? Yes. I think that was the only question I had. Any, anything else to No. Okay. Any other questions or comments for the city manager? Just as a kind of side note, Bill Kenny was on the uh, committee, like a 10 member committee, when the hospital was late. Weren't you, Bill? Yeah, may I say something? Yes, sir. You know, uh, that is very true. And I kind of feel that maybe we as citizens were slighted a little bit, and let me tell you why. Because when the city of Clinton leased the hospital to Integris, the citizens were completely informed and I don't know if that took place this time. That that would be a very good comment, Doyle, and I would uh, accept that totally. If, if, have you looked at the lease? That would be my question. No, I haven't, and I haven't been made available. Yeah. Well actually it's on the website. I can print one for you. Okay. Let, me, let me tell you why I think why I think that's uh, that but that answer. should be made available to all of the citizens that that's where it's at and so forth. Just I would just tell you and, and I appreciate you. I'm comments. not being critical. No, don't misunderstand no. me. But but I would tell you that in in the discussions we've had, that was a lease contract, not a sale contract, and that sale is you know a possibility four years down the road. But we believe that there are plenty of safeguards in the contract we have, that if we come four years down the road, and I, you know, everyone talks about worst case scenarios, but HMA was very close to being the selected group 15 years ago. I know that if their bona fides turn out to be bad, we believe there are plenty of ways whereby that option to purchase can be negated. I don't think that's 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 not a question at this point. We're very excited to have HMA in town. In fact, when you look at the two hospitals in Oklahoma, Midwest City, and uh, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I'm well, not we, saying that HMA is not good. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, but I think you know, there were 12 members on the committee. It was seven, five. Or, I can't remember whether there were 10, but it was it was very close. HMA was near the it was close. Yes, it was. I and and I think. That's where we thought HMA in continuing the lease. I, I don't know what else we could have divulged. I mean, the comment about the option to purchase was something that they were very solid on. That was what they wanted in there. So, you know, you, you come to a point philosophically, I believe, Clinton does not want to, the city does not want to be in the hospital business. Uh, most of the gains, and I've said oh, this publicly, definitely. And, and, and I understand what you're saying, but. For what we did, the lease, I, I hope, and everyone has to make their own mind up, and, and, but I think for the lease, I hope we were well over what we needed to do to, to disclose to the public. The option to sell is just that, but that's a four year down the road discussion that I anticipate the public, if that, if that option is exercised, if they say we want to do that, the public will be heavily involved in that discussion. There are 
you know, I think that's the concern of the public. And, and I think once you look, that's where I found, and that's why I wasn't being facetious, but when you look at the lease, there are so many uh, built-in safeguards. And that's where I say, I think Steve, in conjunction with the negotiation Ryan did, um, you know, we now have the ability to force HMA to uphold their end of the bargain. And, and I don't know that we had that before with Integris. And down the road, there are some hoops that are going to have to be jumped through. Uh, a revisionary clause, in other words, uh, HMA can't just buy the hospital and then turn around and sell it. it you know, there's, there's an opportunity for Clinton to get the hospital back if that's going to happen. We, and the pricing that was put in there is outstanding. So if the citizens at that point, the discussion comes to it, and there was a purchase by HMA, if there was, and that's a very down the road discussion, um, you know, if they decide they don't want the hospital anymore, it's possible the city of Clinton could get that back in a revisionary clause for nothing. So that that's a pretty onerous clause for a business to pay. And a lot of what I'm talking about is going to be four years down the road. That's going to be negotiated. And people are going to have a great say in that, I think. So, but I definitely understand. I think there's a feeling out there that there way. There is, and that's just what I was trying to tell you. Yeah. And I, my opportunity is to say that's a four year down the road discussion that the citizens will have to have. But at this point, the lease contract is outstanding. So, well, we got into that and didn't know where we're going there, but I wanted to give an update. But I appreciate your comments. I think those are good comments. And, uh, I know they're heartfelt comments. So, any other questions or comments related to anything under the city? This is your opportunity. If you have any comment related to the city, this is the uh, audience participation. You're welcome to make it at this point. Not everybody may not have an uh, email where they can read your contract. I'd be glad to bring anybody out. It's you know, it's it's one of those things. There's a lot of information that flows to the city. Any citizen can come to City Hall and get it. Um, we've tried to. When when you look at the world today, uh, we've tried to make those <clears throat> items available more in a general. Now, some of us use the internet, some don't. And so, but anytime any citizen wants Some don't have the internet. That's very true. And some of us carry it around 24 7. So, well, somewhere between that's the two, two of you, if you ever don't. have something you need from the city, it's always available. We, we know how to photocopy. And, and Rhonda's been very good when we've had people ask for things. Rhonda's staff. Lisa has been very good to make copies for people. So, I have one more question. Yes, sir. Has there been appraisal made on that property as of yet? No. Not as of Are yet. you going to make an appraisal on the property? I believe we need, yes. It's something we need to do. You are going to? Yes. Any other questions or comments? I would like to say the house on South 13th has been in question for so long. Looks pretty good with the fence around it. I don't know who did that. But, uh, did, the, did the city put the things up? Yes. Look, I compliment you on that. It's <coughs> all that there to do. Wheels are just described slowly, but they do cry. And I've been out to the white dog, and the toilet's flush, so I like that. It's always exciting. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for the comment, guys. We appreciate people being here, guys. It's uh, I've sat through many meetings. I've gone sat through way more than I have. There have been two people in the audience. So anytime you'd like to come, we always welcome. And we welcome the comments. I think they're good comments, and we can always learn from them. Yes, sir. I, I'd just like to make a comment, I guess. The, on, the, on the value of that property, I personally don't see that that's a, that huge of an issue as opposed to development in the tax base in town. When, when we bought all the properties north on 183, I worked at the Department of Transportation. I worked directly with Grayson and indirectly with the council. And rather than the city take some money for some of those properties, we traded. That, that's how the city got the title to this property. And it was only in the interest of development as opposed to 10, 15 property owners trying to, to bulk up and sell the little segments that were left. And you look north and you look at the development, you look at the change in the tax base. I'm not sure that, that we, the city, should be interested in a fair market value for that as long as we get out of what we got in it and, and our tax base is going to increase. Uh, Walt made a good point about nine acres, three acres for the building. I don't have the honor of what he thinks. But if, but if the commitment is to a motel and a restaurant, 
maybe it needs to be segmented to that property that you really have a need for, maybe. The, the, the federal rules are when the federal money is involved in a buyout, they sell it for the same price per square foot. They pay a premium price to some of these properties. So by trading it, we got, we got around having to get the, the, the fair market value or, or that premium price we paid. If it was part of somebody's home for 50 years, they felt different about it than the true market value. The price went up to, to get them to abandon it without having to condemn it. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying a lot just to go back to saying, I'm not sure we ought to get hung up on fair market value of the property. Yeah, and I think those are conversations that uh, you know Steve will have with uh, Keaton yeah. and his family and negotiations, Ryan will be involved. I, I think it's a good point. You know, we have had an attitude of, over the last years I've been on, and Don had the attitude, you know, development, uh, you want development. And uh, everybody gets up every day. You know, I've got several CPA offices in town. I see them working just like me, so it's competition. I think the development for the city, the revenues for the city down the road, a business that's there for years pays for years. So it definitely has some assets, and I know Steve will take that into account. And those are some of the conversations that different people have brought forward to him. So appreciate the comments. Any other comments or questions for the council? I have no comment. I mean, no problem with it, with the evaluation as long as you retain what you have got in it. Absolutely. You're not going to give it away. Sure. Well, I mean, I'm not for sure way you'll do it. But yeah. Well, and I, I think that's something. Know the that's, way you're operating. Steve's getting a lot of input, not just from us, but also from citizens. Uh, and I think the interest is, bottom line is, and I think the thing that I'm left with is the development people are excited about. Uh, the details, right. you know, as long that's as the true. city gets its investment back in it and there's a future return, you know, that's the thing about what we've done in other areas. You do things and there's a future return. Well, that return is going to last for our children and grandchildren's lives, hopefully, if we all are fortunate and the economy continues on. So that's what we look at and balance that against what, what the value is. And I don't think any of us could have said when we did that trade that uh, T.H. Rogers would be up there. So I don't know that I have that crystal ball. I wish I did. Or Bob Smith. You know, that, that's yeah, you bet. Yeah. pretty good business. Oklahoma Tire. Probably. Two good businesses for Clinton, Oklahoma. And that ability, that was a, a move. Grayson and you worked out that I thought was pretty sharp. So appreciate you guys being here. Any other questions or comments? Did Once anybody again. know that Gerald Green is now in the Hall of Fame of journalism? We we recognized him that now. Yes. Guys, we appreciate you being here. If there are no other comments or questions, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the regular meeting of the Clinton City Council. So uh, yes. Yes. Yes.